Dr. Baliga here. This podcast belongs to a group of 10 podcasts on statistics in medicine. These podcasts should give you a solid foundation on this topic. It's derived from an outstanding chapter titled Statistics in Medicine in Baliga's textbook of internal medicine, available at www.mastermedfacts.com. The chapter is authored by Dr. Donna Windish, MD, Associate Professor at Yale University School of Medicine. She is the Associate Program Program Director for the Yale Primary Care Internal Medicine Residency Program. Dr. Windish completed her medical school degree at the University of Connecticut and her internship and residency in New York at the University of Rochester. She went on to do fellowship in general internal medicine at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and obtained her MPH at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Dr. Windish has been on faculty at Yale since her fellowship. She is clinically active in both inpatient and outpatient medicine, oversees the research and residency program for the Yale Primary Care Training Program, and teaches medical students and residents biostatistics and how to read medical literature. Multiple choice question. A study wishes to assess birth characteristics in a population. Which of the following variable types would be used to classify the type of delivery where delivery categories are labeled as cesarean, natural, or induced? A. Discrete B. Continuous C. Ordinal, D. Nominal, and E. Dichotomous. And the answer is D. Nominal. Since the variable in question is broken into three naming categories, they do not have any rank or order associated with them. The variable would be a nominal variable. Statistical overview. Statistics is the scientific use of data to describe and draw inferences about true associations by assessing the strength of evidence for or against a hypothesis. Statistics and studies are used to make predictions and comparisons about a larger population based on data collected from a smaller sample. Statistics relies on sample data to guide our understanding of the truth. How well the sample represents the larger population determines how generalizable the findings are. Population types. There are three populations from which data are derived and inferences are made. Target population, study population, and sample populations. Target population, this is a specific population for which a measurement or attribute is sought. It includes everyone in the world who possesses the characteristics of interest. Since it's impossible to study everyone, researchers conduct a study with smaller number of subjects. Study population, this is a group of individuals who can easily be identified and who possess all or some of the characteristics of the target population. This population is used to assess generalizability of a study. The more closely the study population resembles the target population, the more generalizable the results are to that target population. Sample population. The sample population is a subset of the study population. It is from this population that data are actually collected. Statistical tests are then used on the sample population to make inferences about the target population. Study outcomes. Primary outcome. This is the main outcome of interest in a study. It can be the end point of the study or another specific event. The primary outcome determines how many people are needed in the study to see a difference in outcome between study groups, that is, how the study is powered. Secondary outcome, 
These are additional outcomes measured in the course of a study. Key point, since the study is not specifically powered to look for secondary outcomes, the strength of evidence may not be sufficient to make conclusions about these outcomes. Descriptive statistics or exploratory data analysis is a method of organizing, summarizing and displaying data. It includes calculating measures of central tendency, example mean, along with measures of dispersion, example standard deviation, graphically displaying data, example histograms, can identify how data is dispersed, which subsequently helps determine which types of statistical analysis can be performed. Types of research variables, continuous variables, dichotomous variables, ordinal variables, and nominal variables. A continuous variable is one that does not contain gaps in values. The limits may occur in the precision of the measurement. For example, systolic blood pressure starts at 0 millimeters of mercury at one extreme and can reach over 300 at the other extreme. This measurement of millimeters of mercury is the smallest measurement available that does not contain interruptions in values. Dichotomous variables. A dichotomous variable is a discrete categorical variable with only two possible values. Many studies look at whether or not patient had an event of interest during the study, example, mortality. So the, the two possible values are either the patient's alive or dead. Ordinal variable. An ordinal variable is a rank or order. Many survey questions ask respondents to give their opinion based on a predetermined scale from a high ranking number to a low ranking number and often use Likert scales that rank outcomes on a scale from 1 to 5. Given that ordinal scales often have an order that suggests a continuum, many ordinal variables can be considered as continuous outcomes for data analysis if they contain four or more categories. Nominal variables classify data into named categories. An example would be marital status. There is no rank or order to a nominal variable. In many cases, researchers collapse nominal variables into two categories so that they can be analyzed using dichotomous statistics. Hypothesis testing. This is an approach that helps to make a decision about the results. Hypothesis testing requires a statement of the null hypothesis, b threshold for declaring a p-value to be significant, usually the p-value number is less than 0 0.05, and c decision to determine if the p-value obtained is statistically and clinically significant. Null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a statement of no effect or no association. For example, stating study participants and controls do not differ in the mean blood pressure after the intervention. One rejects or accepts the null hypothesis based on the p-value obtained for the test and the level of p-value considered statistically significant. Ideally, the researchers have determined this level of significance before the study. In most cases, the p-value considered statistically significant is less than 0 0.05. Key point, when reading a study, one should determine if a the negative result is truly negative or if there was not enough power to show difference in results and b positive result is really positive, including whether it's clinically meaningful. Power, statistical power is the probability that one will find a statistically significant difference in an outcome when a difference really exists. Most studies use 80 to 90% power when calculating their sample size. The greater the power, the larger the sample size needed in a study. P-value, 
A p-value is the probability of obtaining an outcome as extreme or more extreme than the observed result assuming the null hypothesis is true. If the p-value is set less than the significance level prior to the study, the result is considered statistically significant. p-value less than 0 0.05 means the probability is less than 1 in 20 that a difference that large in a study could occur by chance alone. Key points, p-values have limitations in the interpretation. They, no, they do not indicate the strength or direction of the association. They do not provide a direct interpretation of the results. Confidence intervals are more informative than p-values as they are derived from study data. Confidence intervals are computed from sample data with a specific probability that contains the unknown for the true or target population value within the interval. In other words, data from sample population are used to make an inference about the likelihood of an outcome in the target population. A 95% confidence interval means that one can state with 95% certainty that the true number or outcome lies within the range given by the confidence interval. Key point, when looking at a result with a confidence interval, the reader must determine what type of analysis was done. Specifically, was the test looking for a difference in outcomes or a risk of an event? When the difference between outcomes is assessed, any confidence interval that contains the value zero would not be considered a statistically significant result. In the case of a ratio such as relative risk, hazards ratio or ordinal uh, odds ratio, any confidence interval that contains the value of 1 would not be considered statistically significant. Statistical versus clinical significance. Even if the results of the study are statistically meaningful, it does not necessarily mean they are clinically relevant. To determine clinical significance, one must know what the clinic, clinically meaningful difference one should expect to find a study. Key point, when statistical significance is not observed, example p-value greater than 0 0.05, either a the null hypothesis is true and thus no difference really exists or b the sample size was not large enough to detect a difference, thus insufficient study power. Sample size. Researchers need to know prior to starting a study how many people will be needed to achieve a desired result. If the study has a negative result, it may be because the sample size was insufficient. The key point is, you must read the entire study, methods and results, to see if the numbers of participants who remain in the study will meet the sample size limits when assessing statistical significance. This podcast on statistics in general internal medicine is derived from an outstanding chapter on this topic in Baliga's textbook on internal medicine available at www.mastermedfacts.com. It's authored by Dr. Donna Windish, Associate Professor in Internal Medicine at Yale University School of Medicine.